Hey guys, Ketodogra here. I haven't really seen anyone take a deep dive into the stagger mechanic as a whole yet, so I figured, um, why not share what I've learned so far. Before we continue, I need to state a few things. I'm not a data miner, so these are my personal experiences and findings. What I found and experienced is consistent in PvE, and I do not PvP, so I cannot promise you that the information here will help in that department. This is a talk about stagger, not impact. Stagger as in, the stun caused by an action. Impact is the buildup of ACS over time with weapons. Whatever I state in this video isn't the end of all discussions, and I always encourage others to dive as much as I have so that as a community, we have more to share. With that out of the way, let's continue. First, let's talk about unit types in the game. I'll classify it into three types. We have normal enemies, we have armored enemies, and then lastly, we have a combination of the two, which are hybrid enemies. Normal types are prone to getting staggered by a bunch of things even before they hit their ACS overload, such as boost kick, electricity overload, Charged melee swings without projectiles. taking hits when their ACS bar is at 95% or higher. This does not affect other armored cores. Armor and hybrid types, however, are immune to melee and kick staggers pre ACS overload. Let's talk about what generally belongs in these unit types. For normal types, these enemies are mostly within the same size range as the ACU pilot. For armor, these are mostly the large boss types you encounter in the game, such as the combat helicopter, the juggernaut, the smart cleaner, and the sea spider. For hybrid, these can vary in sizes, such as Baltaeus, the cataphract, the Enforcer, and the Soul 644 that Ayer and Iguazu pilots at their respective endings. Now, this is all pre-ACS overload staggers that are possible. But what about post-ACS overload? Post-ACS overload, the stagger mechanic takes a change. When something is an ACS overload, there are a few ways weapons interact with a staggered opponent. Non-charged melee attacks will extend the stagger up to a certain point, usually for you to get all of the hits in. For example, the laser dagger and slicer. 
Heavy weapon attacks such as charged melees or end of melee combos, bazookas, charged weapons, and shotguns will throw the target a certain distance depending on what kind of target it is and will also use a different stagger animation that prompts an enemy to recover faster. For armored types, they are completely immune to any stagger once they have hit overload, so we won't be covering them. Hybrids respond the same as normal types, hence the name. So let's cover the first point. Non-charged melee attacks will typically extend the stagger based on the number of hits the weapon has in their stat page. For example, the pulse blade has two, and so it will extend the stagger once so that the second hit can safely land, and then it will reapply a shortened stagger, much like if you would hit it with a heavy attack. Or, like the laser dagger, it has three, and so it'll extend the stagger twice so that you can land the first two hits safely, and once again on the last hit, it'll apply a heavy attack stagger. But there is another melee weapon in the game that doesn't have a fixed number of hits, neither a stat page, namely punching. With punching, you can punch and extend a stagger up to four times. As the punch does not have a heavy attack, the fourth punch, which is the last, does not actually use a shortened stagger. But what about the other weapons? What if we use the laser dagger and only use the first hit, punch to extend it, and then consistently repeat? It actually ends faster as it is not individually based on each weapon, rather it uses a value per ACS overload. This is a lot of numbers and I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. Let's say whenever you punch an enemy, you add a value of extend equals 0 0.9 with the cap being 4 any value that surpasses 4 no longer extends the stagger the laser dagger being a weapon of 3 hits would have a value of roughly 1.3 so that on the third hit you don't hit 4 and the last hit would count as a stagger if we combine the values the dagger's first hit would be 1.3 followed by a punch being 2.4 and another dagger hit would be 3.7 making the stagger no longer extendable by any melee weapons. Seems simple, right? Well, no. Every weapon's hit weighs differently, and it's pretty hard to get the exact value, as once again, I do not data mine. Let's go back to the dagger and punch. If you open up with the first hit of the dagger and follow it up with a punch afterwards, a dagger won't extend the stagger, but a punch will. This leads me to believe that the dagger's first hit weighs around 2, while each punch weighs around 0.9 instead. If we dagger once and punch twice, we end up with 3.8, well within the value of 4. Curiously, if we do 2 hits of the dagger, then punch, we can only punch to extend once, which means the second hit of the dagger isn't the same as the first, and the value is around the same as a punch or maybe even less. So is this exclusive to the laser dagger? No. The chainsaw has so many hits to it in its charge version, and all of them will extend the stagger, and is proof that every hit weighs differently. The exact values are unknown, but it's definitely a feature. You can even punch a target post-charge chainsaw, and it'll extend the stagger, up to twice as a matter of fact. So what have we covered? Any melee attack will extend a stagger, and any extension below a value of 4 extends it for the standard duration. 
while any hit that pushes it beyond 4 will no longer extend it. This enables you to effectively extend your punish windows if you know how to utilize punching. Every hit with a melee weapon is valued differently and should be experimented on if you wish to try out crazy things. On to the next point. Heavy weapon attacks or end of combos will push the target and reapply a shortened stagger. This is a pretty simple point that's easy to demonstrate. We stagger an enemy and then we use any of the mentioned hits. There is a very subtle difference though between using a heavy melee or combo compared to a firearm. With melees, anytime you end a set of hits or use the charge version, it uses the melee value that we talked about earlier and you can no longer extend a stagger. Cool, works just as intended. But firearms, they have their own stagger mechanic too. And while I'm not sure the exact values of each hit, it seems to be endless so far. Here's what I mean. Fancy, isn't it? We've doubled the amount of times we can stagger an opponent. Looks cool. Remember how I said that they have their own stagger mechanic? Yes, that means it doesn't end here. With kinetic and laser weapons, you can do what I dub wall banging. Wall banging is when you use a firearm and push an enemy into a wall. Colliding with the wall now gives you a different stagger that's longer than if you extend it with a punch. I am not joking. This makes for some really stupid stagger times if everything lines up accordingly. It's important to know that not every firearm, however, can extend staggers. Like melee, every weapon has a different attribute to it, and while I myself have not experimented with every single weapon, it's important to know that lasers inherently do not stagger on an uncharged shot, even the laser shotgun. The laser pistol's charge shot is not considered heavy enough and thus does not extend a stagger. The Wurger's charged version isn't a firearm attribute but a melee attribute and can induce staggers pre-ACS overload as a result, much like the other melee weapons. So what have we covered? Firearms can also extend stagger like melee weapons but it's limited to a certain amount of them and they don't extend as long. With lasers and kinetics, you can push and make an enemy collide with terrain to give a longer stagger extension. Not all firearms are the same attribute. The laser weapons are the best examples of this. Firearm extensions can only happen after a melee extension. Lastly, melee and firearm staggers are separate and do not share the same value. Therefore, it's possible to keep an enemy locked in place for a crazy duration. That's mostly all I have for this topic, and to end the video, why not show just how abusable this is with some of the bosses, using the parts you unlock in those chapters, as well as bare minimum OS tuning. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and maybe I'll see you next time.
戻ってこようとはなあれだけの情報天気の解析が完了エーフォーさん惑星封鎖機構が開発した試作無人兵器です設計要件は持ち込みの重要部分の要件及び侵入者の発射の感謝Let's go. 